ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, you know, figuring out time on a Friday afternoon and joining this panel. And thank you so much for, uh, you know, being kind enough to spend time and, um, you know, like enrich the entire process of putting this uh, together. Um, I will just quickly introduce, uh, you know, my panelists here and uh, let me straight away jump to our conversation without really, you know, wasting too much time. Um, we've got uh, Ramakant Khandelwal. Um, Ramakant is the CMO of Payback India. Um, he has about two decades plus experience across loyalty management programs, um, digital marketing and payment system. Hello, Ramakant. Um, I've got uh, Shujoy Golan. Um, he is the CMO of Affil and uh, he also heads uh, omnichannel SaaS platform businesses, you know, and uh, he's got experiences across B2B, B2C uh, uh, businesses in FinTech, AdTech and e-commerce. Um, I've got Prashant. Uh, Prashant, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, he's a seasoned digital marketing professional, extensive experience uh, with the likes of Microsoft, Nokri, Visa, I don't know if there's the right order, uh, Nielsen, Times Group, etc. But uh, and uh, currently he runs a company called uh, Torque AI, and he is responsible for its revenue, business growth, and expansion. So pure suit. Uh, um, next one from suit is another suit lady, uh, Nina, <laughs> Nina Dasgupta. I think we all know her. Um, she's the founder, CEO for Zarka, and uh, also CEO for Adem. Um, passion is conversion marketing. Um, she has been um, with uh, instrumental in making Zarka invest in the spaces, you know, which are, which are futuristic and are building products, which are absolutely unique to marketing. Last but not the least, Namrita, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, she is currently the chief digital officer, uh, you know, uh, of Aditya Bela group uh, chemical sector, but uh, we know Namrita for a very, very long time. She has been around for about two decades now. And uh, predominantly, uh, again, in marketing space, US, UK, uh, India, I, I think I was in touch with her on one of her assignment long back for auto sectors, so I think from there to luxury to retail, and to specialization in marketing. So, so I think it's a fantastic panel, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much, guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nina, there is a second entry from your panel somewhere. Uh, we can see two Nina Das Guptas on the screen, but you are twice Ajmas anyway. Uh, so two of you would be four. You are on mute, Nina. You are on mute. I'm twice as much, literally also. <laughs> have nothing to do with the food, but I'll try and sort that. Okay, so now, so now there are four there Nina. There's a living person over there in that yeah. <laughs> Would it look like Nina? Yeah, Nina's daughter, I guess. Yeah. Okay, cool. So... So quickly, you know, without, uh, you know, really wasting much time, um, guys, interesting topic, right? Conversational topic, marketing. Have I been reduced to one? Yes, yes, you yeah, are. Yeah, half almost. I've been reduced to, yeah, okay, one, still <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so yeah, so, so conversation marketing, right? I mean, we want to uh, touch uh, the tech um, segment of conversational marketing. We're going to talk about futuristic conversational marketing. We want to talk about how um, NLP, how artificial intelligence, etc., are driving conversation. I think it's amazing, right? I mean, we have been all taught about a traditional funnel, right? purchase funnel, sales funnel, marketing funnel. And I think currently what digital has been able to do is kind of break those funnels completely and make it a lot more uh, shorter, a uh, lot more... Uh, I would say engaging for consumers to directly connect to the brands or even brands to target their customers. So if we just keep the physical conversation about social media, where we use hashtags, where we use, you know, where we get on board with conversation that happens across various products. If we just look at, um, you know, uh, just the one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, from brands and consumers. And I will start for no particular reason, but I'll start with Prashant because, uh, you know, I think he is right on the money and he's doing this for a living. So Prashant, please tell us your definition of conversational marketing and we'll keep it timed. Okay. You have only 180 seconds to talk. Uh, hi, uh, quickly, 
conversation marketing, I would rather look at a definition where you are seeing each and every action of yours is communicating to the end user or consumer. The earlier era where you were looking at a marketing where uh, outdoor and display and digital, everything was different. Right now, everything has to go through one lens because your user at the end is evaluating you across different parameters. Uh, the user could be watching your TVCs, could also be looking, reading uh, blogs and reviews about your product, could also be commenting about them. And it's well known fact that people obviously research a lot about any product nowadays. Even if you're ordering on Swiggy, you end up re reading the reviews for it. So everything that an organization today actually is doing should be focused and communicate one piece. Your strategy of content, your strategy of digital marketing, as well as your product strategy should all be focused on and, and have a one view. So once you kind of achieve, uh, attain that, all your data sets are together, all your communications are together, that is what a right definition of communication marketing because then you are a conversational marketing because then you are not talking two different messages to the end user. Across the board, be it to your partners, users, or uh, the fence sitters, you need to have one single line of communication. Uh, that's how it's I a very interesting point. I want you to hold there and move to Ramakant, actually. You know, Ramakant, um, this is, again, purely your interest and your area expertise when it comes to one single line of communication from a loyalty payment, you know, a fintech kind of a background. Yeah. So how do you guys see it? I mean, what is your definition of conversation marketing? So, uh, you know, our sense about conversational marketing is that uh, it is uh, obviously being a conversation, it's a two way communication. Okay, so first thing, it's not like the standard push communication that we have been, uh, you know, traditionally engaging in, you know, more in the legacy environment. Conversational marketing is where you listen to the customer and you respond to the customer. You know, uh, there could be some uh, key aspects to it, like contextual, real time and personalized, you know, these are actually the, the very, very straightforward buzzwords, as you know, in the marketing uh, automation kind of uh, environment. I think these, these are very critical that uh, apart from what Prashant has already, you know, talked about, it's really a two way listening. And it is uh, something where you listen to your customer more and respond. And probably most of the response is going from the machine. Okay, I mean, it is, that's where, you know, at, in your opening note, you talked about AI, ML, and, you know, NLP and those things. I think it, at the uh, back end, machine is talking to the customer a lot more. Correct. That's yeah. how, you know, I would like to put it. Sure. So I think it's a good good time to kind of bring in Nina and, uh, and, and Sujoy in no particular order, but I'll start with Nina and then move to Sujoy. Um, Nina, how do you look at this automation and how do you think that that is empowering brands because you are at the cusp of where multiple brands are using your platform and your support to do this right for for various uh, of their requirements is there a bucket is there a formula is there anything specific keep in mind or it's just one size that fits all how, how do you guys look at it yeah so if you take a step yeah. back mm -hmm. i think um conversation is a new paradigm and communication and advertising is going to actually uh, be under conversation. It is the new paradigm given the way technology has moved. And conversation marketing is that typical space where the brand and consumer connect as if they're only made for each other and they're the only two people talking to each other. You feel special in every possible way of the connect. A conversation happens only after a series of contacts have happened. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I think uh, that conversation will happen only if you're connecting, if a brand understands a consumer and if a consumer feels that understanding coming from the brand. So therefore, um, it, it is not linear, in my opinion. It starts possibly in the offline world totally, where you need to understand the consumer mindset, what we call psych psychographics today, very simply, or what we call humans are based on personalities, what was derived by Carl Jung ages ago, or the Adrian uh, psychology. So it is about what we do is about connecting mindset of consumers to a single brand conversation and brand agenda so that every consumer feels special. It's like I said, it's about feeling that you're the only two people talking to each other, feeling special. 
so technology of course plays plays a massive role then in terms of making sure that the continued communication by the mindset is happening on an ongoing basis you're you're learning more about your consumer and you're responding in relation to the consumer as uh, mindset right mm-hmm. so this group for instance is a homogeneous group yeah but how do i find the heterogeneity you know if i ask ramakanth or the marketer or i ask namrita namrita and ramakanth tell me the points of heterogeneity in this homogeneous group what is my mindset what is arnab's mindset that for me is conversation marketing and that's where the role of technology comes in my opinion that's where ai starts building it is a step before your marketing it is planning it is like i said a new paradigm so mm-hmm. that's what we have been working on and that's oh, we have had tremendous success with that super so you it's it's a broader um, you know perspective about what the overall piece is i'm going to move to shujay and ask um when it comes to mobile because and i will keep my questions about the platform that specialize uh, you guys specialized in on uh, so tell me do you think that for mobile uh, is it easier to identify psychographics because it is a lot more personalized device for a, at least in a country like india uh, you know um, uh, in comparison to laptop where of of course other other countries it is probably personalized both devices are personalized but do you think mobile is a more, much more personalized device and therefore the way you guys use the intelligence from mobile is any different or easier or like how do you guys operate so anub uh, mobile is a huge a uh, huge enabler and uh, has been so for years right so in the way uh, and if we wear our consumer hats and uh, look at a thing back at the uh, evolution of uh, of media and uh, marketing right so anything which starts small uh, starts offline it's easy to drive conversations it's easy to make it conversational uh, with mass media coming in which was one way uh, right. there was a marketer sitting uh, on tv or uh, in the print ad uh, communicating one way uh, digital uh, brought out a difference not at the beginning of digital but uh, mm-hmm. so with uh, desktop advertising at the beginning of digital again it was one way largely banner ads uh, you could click through ex- possibly discover content and explore uh, i think both uh, bringing mobile and for obvious reasons right so again when mm-hmm. we look at social media social media is uh, is a layer uh, or is an interface uh, conversation possibly has much far greater in- interfaces Uh, mm-hmm. and mobile is a channel right so we are looking at it, so thing mobile is a channel and there are interfaces uh, today uh, my mother uses alexa to time her uh, cooking uh, she uses alexa to listen to uh, listen to music uh, for her that's conversational commerce or uh, that that that's conversational marketing uh, sure. and uh, what what she's engaging in uh, my daughter has a bunch of use cases i have a bunch of use cases and i think all this uh, these are fantastic enablers um and mobile for sure right and we've seen uh just the nature of the device uh the ability to personalize conversation takes it to a very different level uh the ability of access and then that's the second point uh earlier uh, to access conversations at scale or to enable conversations at scale uh, was just not possible or you had to be of a certain uh, socio economic strata to to access it but obviously mobile has changed all of that and we've seen that uh, that just happen yeah, with correct. such speed uh, correct and as is cutting through right and that that brings me to a question to namrit actually you know again on the same format of uh, conversational marketing you have had a very exciting career right from from an automobile to luxury to you know currently even with abg uh, have you seen conversation changing with you know this categories and and if it has then where do you think we stand today and does it therefore empower you to probably predict a future uh, for a lot more pe- uh, i mean a lot of us namrata you are muted uh, we can't hear you sorry yeah no problem uh, yeah uh, yeah and so you're right uh, i think uh, it's interesting over the last decade seen conversation marketing really evolve um so i think about a decade back at least here in india when we were looking at it it was predominantly around you know a lot of social and what you were doing on social 
um, and towards, uh, I would say about five to six years back, I saw that first transition happen where we started saying social is great, uh, performance is great, all of those aspects are great, but you know what, they're actually customers, given that I was working with Taj Hotels and we had a website and people were coming and making bookings over there. We're like, what can we do over here? Because mm -hmm. we have analytics, which is giving us some information. How do we start looking at combining that analytics to mm -hmm. start creating different kinds of conversations on our website? So that was a starting point in terms of saying, can we actually look at our lead generation data, which can come from multiple sources, including social search, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Combine that with Siebel, which was our CRM system that we had, mm -hmm. and then look at that in terms of building a certain intelligence around mm -hmm. the customer, which would play back across multiple channels. It wasn't just across mm -hmm. one channel. Mm -hmm. From there, if I fast forward to, I guess, my Mahindra days, and that's you know the last yeah. three, four years, what we've been doing is using the AI elements a lot more. And over there, I think uh, I'll share one or two examples which would potentially mm -hmm. resonate with people. Uh, one is really around the whole area about saying that, you know, how do you create uh, meaningful conversations with these customers? So if you take a category like farmers, and I'm going to take not the traditional B2C categories because we all have enough yeah. examples of those, but uh, we were doing this entire sort of, you know, piece of work around saying, what can we do with farmers? We want to impact their lives. We make equipments for them. We make, you know, products for them. Mm -hmm. What can we do in that space? And we went out and like Nina said, we did the primary research, the understanding of the psychology and the yeah. <coughs> mindset of the farmer. Yeah. And then started building a platform whereby we said, okay, can we use this platform as a starting point for information mm -hmm. dissemination? Uh, and that's where we had chatbots. So we partnered with IBM and we created those mm -hmm. chatbots which could start giving basic information like, you know, if I'm, if I'm sowing a potato plant, what's the right time to harvest it? What kind of fertilizers need to go in and stuff like that. And so you started having very meaningful conversations, which eventually dovetailed into e-commerce. Uh, that's, that's one example of saying, you know, how the conversation, so the conversation instead of being a push became a pull. Mm -hmm. uh, the second example I'll take uh, very briefly is what we did with the auto business. And what we mm -hmm. found over there was again, multiple channels of interaction and how do you create the differentiation? So here we went into looking at saying, um, you know, can we actually uh, do a lot more customer profiling? So one was the customer profiling that we did because we were operating at a group level. So we mm -hmm. said we have the opportunity of taking second party data and mm -hmm. looking at that and adding that as a unique value add to our mm -hmm. understanding of the customer. True. And then we uh, aligned with um, um, a consumer profiling company, which was a Boston based company then and there, mm -hmm. you know, more which have emerged since then, but uh, this was mm -hmm. about three, four years back. And mm -hmm. at that point in time, the intent was really to say, can we do consumer profiling and use that again back on our websites? Can we use that on the other, you know, channels of uh, communication so that we can actually start nurturing those leads and pushing them down the funnel. Mm -hmm. And once they have bought the car, one of the the challenges we had was because the purchase happens with the, o, uh, with the dealer and not with the OEM and we were the OEM. How do you, in that scenario, keep that conversation going with the customer? So by... So, Namrita, uh, sorry to cut you. So, in, you know, from this first party, second party uh, information, yeah. I would actually ask the question to Ramakant. Um, you know, you sit on significant amount of information from consumers. I mean, that's your core business, right? I mean... You, that's what you do for other brands which are using your uh, platform. So, so is there any specific uh, kind of exercise that you know organizations like yourself do to kind of funnel uh, psychographical analysis of consumers? Like, say what Nina said about offline research, even Amrita mentioned. So, do you guys conduct a lot of those online as well? So. Uh uh, Arnab, uh, as you know that uh, we work with some of the big retail brands and banks mm -hmm. and uh, you know with each of these partnerships we get certain data mm -hmm. and uh, that data even goes uh, down to the level of uh, the SKUs that the customers are purchasing. So yeah. not only do we have a holistic data you know uh, mm -hmm. about their spends you know using a credit card or a debit card to their travel spends to their retail spends 
uh, even uh, fuel purchases. So it, it's a very good set of uh, data for us to deduce out of it as to what would be the customer, let's say, customer's wallet potential. What would be the the customer's life stage? Because you know these are things that you can uh, deduce from the behavioral data. I mean, the standard examples like somebody is buying a diaper and you know mm -hmm. life stage and so on and so forth. The question mm -hmm. that you asked about the psychographic thing, mm -hmm. because you know uh, two people may be buying the same things, but uh, I think what appeals to them the desire is different. Uh, yes. it, it's, yeah. it could be slightly yeah. different. Yeah, their motivations are different. Their the motivations, motivations could be different, right? Uh, I mean, uh, their ambitions could be different. So uh, this uh, we have that. platform. Yeah, mindset, sorry. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have a platform uh, which is in partnership with a company called Unomer. Uh, it, it's a market digital market research company. And uh, we have integrated with them. So all the data that we have at our end, which helps us in segmenting the audience that you want to further analyze or interact with, or you know, get a sense of. I mean, this platform uh, allows uh, you know, brands to do that. Uh, it's an opt-in kind of survey. You you release it on the mobile app, and the customers you know uh, answer your questions, and you can further enrich uh, you know the data set that you have. So the platform is very much there, and a lot of companies use it for various reasons, including their let us say uh, you know when when they are coming with an ad, they want to see whether the ad appeals to a particular section of the audience or not. I mean, the, the advantage of digital is that your cohort size could be <laughs> you know, as small as one and you can get data across that. True. So yes, that is possible, but not as a part of the core business. Core business is really about the behavioral data, uh, real yeah. purchase behavior data, and then building on it a layer of, let's say more insights on how the customers are thinking. Cool. So from enriching um, experience into uh, enriching bank balances, Nina, um, mm -hmm. how profitable is this business? You know, um, uh, how do you guys monetize conversational marketing, how do you foresee, I wouldn't say how do you guys, but how do you foresee as a business leader who is the forefront of making this change or working with this change makers, how do you foresee this becoming a formal business line, you know, and, uh, and therefore the partnerships, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to respond to that by, you know, narrating a small story that I had heard years ago. Okay. So there is this man who goes for an event at a marriage in Lucknow. Lucknow Nawabi place and a buzurg Admi asks this young man who is a journalist mm. saying, Achha, bhai, kya karte ho? Mm. So that man says, Patrakaru. Then you go to Tika Lik Litigo, but Pagar Kili Kakar, salary Kili Kakar. Um, in a nutshell, that's conversational marketing, and that's what happens when you're investing in a business. It's about your ability, it's about your ability to. Uh, hold on to your idea and hold on to the thought because you know the shift is coming. So um, in terms of making money, you don't make money the day you start that business, right? You plow money because you're building a technology, you're building layers of the product. But um, are you making money in the future? Yes. Because when you make money in the future, for instance, when simply when Ramakant said, laid out his first party data and he said the need is behavioral meaning for me in my mind is well i've solved that behavioral problem for many brands mm. today right it's just a matter of integrating so there is definitely money it's about mm. being in it for the long run so um you you just need to make sure that the role that you play in the entire ecosystem remains significant Conversational marketing, if you just say that I'm someone who will create headlines, it is not a sustainable business model. True. If you say that I'll do performance, it's not a sustainable business model. It's need, it mm -hmm. needs to be something that is integrating data, intent, interest on a layer of technology. Yeah. And that is constantly improving, only then it's profitable. Do we have any regrets? No. Are we profitable? Yes. You know? Yeah. Did we make money on day one? Absolutely not. Yeah. True. But um, it's, I think it's uh, worth every penny that goes in because it's multiples are huge. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, because it's just an offshoot and you also have personally selected that question from Rajnath Kamath, 
um, would you take that question? It's conversational, so I'll just read it for everybody. Conversation is personal in an automated impersonal communication. It's an integrated message delivery of brand's communication strategy. So it's not really a question, but I thought it's a very in important and interesting point of view. You know, you have selected to answer it live or add to it. Would yeah. you do it now? Absolutely. I'd love to. Uh, mm. So a brilliant point, uh, Raj, and I know you're in that space significantly mm. yourself. It is, it is personal and that is the point that I made in the beginning. Conversational marketing is when every consumer feels that the brand is talking only to her or him. It is personal. Uh, you don't even feel the platform actually because your uh, device, in my opinion, in my personal experience, like you say, it's personal. Uh, my device is an extension of my own self today. Yeah, mm. it is. So it's absolutely a valid point. Mm. It, I, I think one needs to also focus on the second part that you're saying is about brands using this as an effective means. You know, I think the brand now needs to learn about saying that this is not performance marketing. This is about building a relation to have the conversation. So it is far larger than performance marketing. One of its outcomes is better performance, efficient, more effective, you know, there is greater efficacy. Um, there is greater effectiveness. But um, I think the second part is which needs to be taken far more seriously. I think that is less of a comment and more of a direction and advice possibly, Raj. You know, um, it, it's, it's something that is of significant value and requires significant attention from brands today. They, they, it can, you know, I find it a bit disturbing. For instance, when everything gets bucketed under performance as a parameter, you know, almost saying, I want innovation. So when you take innovation to them saying this is innovative, they say, okay, can you share precedence, please? Yeah, so then you wonder, okay, fine. You know, how can I bring precedence to innovation? So it is, you know, copied with pride innovation kind of a thing. And then we'll say, okay, fine, this is fantastic. But you know, the last person generated a lead for me in 137 rupees. So because we are bringing in conversation, will that cost per lead go down to 122 rupees? So I think we have to stop commoditizing and marginalizing the impact because as individuals, we have to see if the conversation is not great, we get bored yeah, and we switch off. And a brand today can no longer afford that because you know what? We are researching on the net and we are eliminating on the net as users. So you cannot even generate boredom. So Raj, I think your second part of that statement is a brilliant direction and something I resonate with totally. Yeah, so I mean, I'll just also ask uh, on that same um, you know uh, point that you made that um, you know it is it is an extension. The device is an extension um, of yourself, and and the technology therefore you know is a, is is an intelligent layer you know that is creating this experience for people. So I'll ask Prashant actually. Prashant, um, you've been building a tech uh, yourself, right? So um, tell us a little more. I mean, and in probably language that you know, uh, what non-tech savvy people would understand that wh what do you keep in mind? How do you build this? I wouldn't call them emotions, but the sentiments in a, in a, in an NLP, you know, in a process. So, uh, there's one statement that I'd read long back and which completely uh, encompasses what, how we look at technology and what it is. It is mind over mouse. So digital and others, uh, eventually uh, brand marketers also start looking whether you're clicking, whether what, what, where the user is going and where the mouse click is happening. But essentially it's mine. I mean, a user today would, and, and uh, trying to simplify and as much words, uh, the, the evolution of AI into the marketing space is more in terms of telling, uh, uh, looking at the insights of millions and millions of users and page views and giving you data sets say, saying that, okay, this is the best approach for a brand to take. I mean, uh, a, a clear example there is now you AI can actually tell you what kind of your newsletter subject line should be. I mean, for a brand like, uh, let's say Payback or a, a, any other brand, which is sending marketing communication, an AI can actually understand, do testing and tell you that, okay, these kind of subjects line will help users open your email. Now that's very important. Now, if you're kind of 
running a campaign uh, or you kind of doing a marketing uh, outreach the, it's not important for you is to be where you are being seen or what action is being taken but is your user actual user is integrating uh, interacting with you i mean uh, evolution of marketing happened where users were saying that okay so many people should see my ad to move that somebody should act on it now we are talking about a, a user should engage with you now it's it's a typical direction evolution of a communication that you want the user to engage but now you don't only want the user to engage and buy but you want repeat user you want loyalty you want the user to be your mouthpiece now to achieve that you need to kind of track and have a single uh, actually not only communicate to the user but also listen to the user everywhere the data sets is being i mean you today brands and marketers have hundreds and thousands of touch points with users how do you capture all of these touch points and understand and take the next measured step is what actually ai and ml today is helping you right uh, one exact example which i said is newsletters it also tells you which sites to go and advertise to what should be a subject line so all of those can be done through ml true i think i'll bring a uh, like an example which is closer to the time we are in uh, during this covid 19 um there's this company called the health tab um they actually created an entire uh, health platform which was built on top of messenger so chatbots primarily though namrata strictly told me to not talk about chatbots but i will just take one example namrata is i because i think it's very humanitarian so they actually allowed people to during this time while well, mental health is a big queue um uh, wanting to be sure whether um, you are you are you are fit enough you know to dwell in the real world or not i think health tab built a fantastic uh, uh, business uh, and which kind of flourished in the last 6 or months is all about helping people ask these questions which are which are uh, you know um, intuitively right uh, and therefore you know kind of guide them to a direction right and so so the next question is actually more about use cases i think we have all spoken about use cases from the past but primarily to the marketers here namrata ramakan sujoy um, examples of such work around us i want this panel to give some real work example so that you know we we set the right context who who will take the first um, namrata ramakan sujoy sure um uh, anup uh, just our day to day life is so full of examples and mm. uh, so many of us like to try out new tools so right. so eager to share um i think both uh, having been both a b2b and a consumer marketer and uh, mm. continue to wear both hats um just tools help us uh, do and uh, today ai ml does not always necessarily uh, come into a tool that's only priced at say $5000 a month but uh, anything uh, which we use every day uh, super cheap could be a chrome browser plugin uh, that's mm-hmm. uh, that's helping enable this as well uh, so at least on uh, on the b2b side for for conversational uh, it helps to understand because today there's so much conversation that's digital either uh, mm-hmm. on zoom meetings like this uh, or on email uh we uh, for example use uh, use sales tools right so anything that uh, can help us understand intent and sentiment uh, from for example the sales emails that we exchange right so we are trialing uh, in fact i'm working to trial a tool called uh, humantic.ai uh, i i know someone who's built it and uh, it got launched on product hunt about a week ago uh, rave reviews but it helps do that uh tools like uh, sales scan right to understand uh, the conversation with the prospect you are having uh, is the prospect serious are the words uh, he or she uses indicate that they are concerned that they eager that they uh, don't want to or do they not want to move ahead right uh, so mm-hmm. on and so forth on the consumer side on the other hand uh, at the risk of plugging uh, our own product uh, we use something we built something called uh, uh, shoffer Uh, which helps retailers build uh, auto workflows uh, online to offline workflows uh, mm-hmm. help surface their offline store inventory and uh, and obviously the easiest uh, way and how all of us shop is uh, is through conversation right and there is a conversational interface uh, today through chat uh, but uh, also 
available through web interfaces through anything else which understands today when i say i am looking for and it's easier said than done right so all of us have gone to an e-commerce site and said i'm looking for a brown leather belt uh, and seen brown leather bags uh, and said oh no this is not what i want so it takes a lot of effort to get that right uh, i think today there is both effort and technology but uh, the products are there uh, all waiting for us marketers and consumers to use now i'm sure of the products cases ramakant uh... yeah so uh, you know one uh, case i would talk about and frankly it is you know when you look at it it looks more like an iceberg you know at the top of it what you what comes out you might feel it's very simple but the fact is you know so much has to go behind the scenes to make it happen so a simple use case that you know we have built over the years is let's say uh, some what we internally call a wait time ratio now i know that there are set of customers who go for let's say a high frequency purchase in this case let's take the example of fuel purchase you know buying petrol or diesel uh now if we study that that uh, you know trend for a long period of time across millions of customers and uh, you know all the other variables uh, put together uh, we have come up with something called a wait time ratio so for uh, for the cohorts we know that this customer normally comes to the petrol uh, bank again in in 7 days to 15 days to even a month right uh, so if somebody is not coming uh, back and and since we are in the business of loyalty you know our core driver is that the customer has to come back again and again and again right so if the customer yeah. is not coming back then we are potentially looking at a risk of losing that customer and at that point we need a nudge that nudge could be a simple information that could even be embedded with an offer you know for that customer the more the delay is you know you need to really sweeten the offer offer more right now to achieve all this uh and uh, because there is audience here and i don't want to make it sound like it's a very simple exercise i think all of us here have done it the implementation of a typical marketing cloud kind of a solution which is banking heavily on data data is the is the lowest layer uh the richer the data the better your modeling is going to be right so we have to first create a you know 360 degree or you know single uh source of truth Uh, for 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 the data you know that data could be dem- starting with demographics to transactional to the response to your previous campaigns and uh, whatever other you know external ingestion you can do mm-hmm. this data is just a starting point on top of it you have to build layers of you know uh, deterministic uh, deterministic let's say equations and probabilistic modeling and and then ai and other things which are only going to hone this the more data that you get data at the uh, you know at the behavior level your know, true behavior and the models have to be defined so i just wanted to make sure that the use cases may not sound like out of this world but even to achieve those those simple use cases it really takes incredible amount of you know uh, effort and things to fall in place so i think arthur c clark said uh, clark's third law that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic so i agree with you that sometimes it just looks very simple but it takes a lot uh, you know behind it so from a lot to sitting on a lot of data nina uh, i'll come to you namrita on a, on a on a more specific case significant sitting on a lot of data of so many brands and i think ramakan made a point that data is indeed the lowest layer and the richer the data is you can build such a huge structure on it um there are so many questions about data security so many issues of and, and now we know from september the world is moving to a cookie less tea party as we as we call it so then what happens with so much data and uh, consumers are more reluctant to share data and uh, you want to build an entire business on top of yeah not ready to share data and i think apple is ensuring people to ask every time there is an app that you know do you want them to get your data or you don't want to get them data so what happens then and mm. what do you how do you foresee a world like that it's it's um god okay it just went a bit techno and up went a bit techno it was almost doing break dance towards the end of the question uh <laughs> so uh it's interesting you ask that um so we anticipated a part of this uh cookieless world a while back right and mm-hmm. we were working on our entire platform 
um, with with use and application of data that happens actually at more at a panel level and at a script level with the companies, the first party data, but it is more about estimation and use of it without revealing identities. Right. Uh, so the way our data is structured is actually structured on pure behavioral, what should I say, the offline personality buckets, which mm -hmm. are derived uh, via a psychometric tool that we have. And we take it live via uh, Blue Kai's, you know, we activate the data via DMP. So the Blue Kai, mm -hmm. right? The beauty of our data is that it's, it's going to be panel based. So we're going to get panel based information more than actual first party cookie led data. So the panel information, which is the shift, which is where, which is, which is where the beauty of our tool is, which is what is creating excitement around it is that everything is going to go on link panel. So for instance, if payback has a panel of their entire people, I can actually estimate the entire universe for payback using one layer of psychometric tools and there's no data transfer and there's no cookie enablement after that. There is no cookie based conversation that happens, right? So our data has been structured um, on the future of data, which is panel, um, actually very less on cookies. We don't do cookie less because mm -hmm. cookie in any case fades away and dies in three months. Yeah, Your cookie is not sure. relevant any longer. So mm -hmm. I think how you define and structure your data is what makes it important. It needs to be personality and psychographic based and mindset based and intent based, you know, like Sujay but, said. True. Uh, sorry to cut you, but interesting point because I think the entire digital's entire point of view when it started was about IP based data and cookie based data. And that was the differentiator because the world survived on panel and extrapolation of panel on the entire population. Right. Yeah. Uh, are we going back there? Well, we never, you know, the interesting part is we never gave up the panel. The entire mm. study that we do today, you look at Comscore, mm. anyone, any planner who's doing mm. the plan is still bloody clicking on that one battle mm. button of Comscore. Sure. We are still doing Bark. So we haven't moved from panel. We're still doing Nielsen Scope. We're still doing PGI. We're still doing IRS. Mm. We're a panel world. Unless you have offline research, which is the most deterministic, you cannot have probabilistic in the online world. Because mm. online world, is, is a series of activities that are happening, right? So, uh, yes, we are going back to panel. The only thing that will get added is layers of validation that will get added. So blockchain, that's where blockchain mm -hmm. is going to begin getting used. So which is saying that mm -hmm. this estimation getting validated or does it require yes. an update, right? But your, your data is today sitting hidden. Yeah? There are companies like Infosum that mm -hmm. got bought out by Xander. When I met them yeah. two years back, he told me, he said, Mina, you know, everyone shows me the door. And today is, he, he, does, he giggles all the way to the bank each day. Yeah? Sure. So Xander has bought it, right? So I think the signals were there two years back. We are going mm -hmm. back into the panel world because we need real people. Sure. Automation and innovation are separate. You see, innovation happens probably still with the mind. Mm -hmm. Correct. So to come back to uh, Namrata, so then we're going back to panel. Um, and, uh, and I think Prashant mentioned about a more, uh, you know, individualistic conversation where a machine is talking to a human being. So while marketing goes back so many years to the panel and consumers move to talking to a machine, where does it come together? I think, uh... I see a very good synergy between the two and let me share an example actually because mm -hmm. I think that's a classic example of you know the synergy between man and machine in that sense mm -hmm. and I am going to though I said we won't talk about chatbots but you're now getting <laughs> me back into that zone. Yeah. So, um, something that really, he's a great moderator he drew you I in. Know. <laughs> he did. So, you know, uh, this was when I was at Mahindra and um, what we realized as we were looking at uh, transforming the car buying experience, uh, mm -hmm. something that came out of our primary research was that um, customers who used to typically come three times a year, uh, not a year, sorry, three times in their car buying process mm -hmm. into a dealership to check out, you know, the color, the, the configuration, um, actually taking the test drive and all of those things over a period of 
uh, you know, uh, a couple of years, that number dropped from thrice a year to once, uh, sorry, uh, thrice in a purchase cycle to once in a purchase cycle. Now, the minute we got that data point, we said, okay, fine, this is a make or break because this is, we always knew that the, that the, uh, you know, the in showroom experience was important. We also knew within that the test drive experience was really important. But then this coming down to just one particular, you know, sort of walk in or one interaction with the customer in the entire car, car buying journey where we would get face to face with them was, was really critical. Now, what we also realized was that we are in an industry where you have an attrition rate of 30% plus, and that's an industry average uh, that mm -hmm. you have. So you may have somebody attending to you as a sales executive who's three days old in the system, or you may have somebody who is you know, three years old, and the experience you will get is going to be so different. The conversation you're going to have with the customer for that 30 minutes that you're giving him the test drive mm -hmm. is going to be of such a different nature. So that is where the man and machine connect happened. And we said, can we actually augment the capabilities of our uh, you know, salespeople and give an opportunity for the customers to start you know, getting their questions answered in the first go? Over a period of two, three years, we launched this about three years back. Over a period of three years, we've collected a lot of data in terms of modifying in terms of making the entire bot far more intelligent, but also using those questions as an understanding of how do we need to sort of moderate those conversations. So we've got six archetypes, um, you know, over there. So all the six archetypes, and I'm not going down to an individual customer level because we yeah. haven't reached yeah. that level of maturity, yeah. but at the six archetype levels, now we have a fairly defined understanding of you know how the conversation may flow it is still fluid it's not scripted it's still fluid but i think that is where the man machine sort of you know um, convergence has happened very beautifully and that's just one example of you know seeing how that intelligence can play a role in actually uh, building a far more meaningful uh, conversation for the customer and making sure that obviously it has a direct impact on the conversion ratios you know so, so, you know, I just wanted to jump in here, Arna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably ask PD to talk about the project they're doing for us, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually exactly what Namrita said that once you have derived your consumer personas, how does it actually, how is it that data is getting integrated? And PD and all have worked really, really I, well on that. I project. want to do it a little more dramatically, though. So, I yeah. want to read out Alan Turing, okay? He said, yeah that I believe that at the end of the century, the use of words and general educated opinion will have altered so much that one will be able to speak of machines thinking without expecting to be contradicted. Okay, so to that, from that point, PD, I want to ask you um, that how do you kind of inculcate that knowledge or and, and what are the kind of science, what are the kind of rocket science that goes on from the algorithm experts or people who are pros in NLPs to build these machines which literally talk to, you know, consumer at the same level of or similar level of um, in a intellectual quotient. So uh, let me answer it because I'm not an engineer, I'm a sales guy and my understanding would probably be the at the bottom tier. So uh, the way uh, uh, what Nina mentioned and uh, your question, I really, uh, Alan Turing is something and that still is a standard test to break uh, AIs. So uh, <laughs> most yeah. piece here is data. It's about data yeah. density. The more data you have, you mm -hmm. are able to let the algo decide. And, and a, a piece where the man-machine conflict happens is when you start telling AI to generate a specific recommendation, that won't work. I mean, you can't tell the technology to give you a certain result. Let the technology achieve the result. I mean, mm -hmm. as Nina as said in a project that we're doing with Nina is, is where uh, the, the machine is telling you that, okay, this is your consumer and this is a user and this is what their behavior, their likes, dislikes, archetype. You can't take and tell that a user who is coming onto a sports page has to be a sports lover. No, maybe I came there 
trying to read something else. So you don't put those rules. So there used to be a rule-based uh, uh, jargons that we used to do that anybody landing on technology side is a tech lover. Or, or uh, as marketing evolved that anybody on sports and tech side is a male. So that used to yeah. be the one and saying that automobile ads always were targeted at men. But no, mm-hmm. now you will see automobile ads displaying women as the driver and the person entirely the only person in the ad. Because mm-hmm. you let, if, you're, if your technology is working for you, let the AI, let the algo tell you who your consumer is and what is the best for that consumer. You cannot then put in a rule that uh, will clash. I mean, that's where the man and machine disruption is. But just to uh, add one more bit to it, the more of the data, uh, the more measurement of each and every touch point is very critical here. So you let those things come into place. Uh, Are you measuring the right thing? Are you removing the bots and uh, frauds out of it? Because today, even if you run a campaign, you'll end up finding 60 to 80 percent users landing on your sites are just bots. So is your recommendation talking to a machine talking to machine or is it machine talking to user? I believe machine talking to user is a much better scenario than machine talking to machine. So that needs to be, uh, you know, removed from it. And I can see Ramakan's smile because I'm sure he would be using a lot of these elements across the board. Cool. So, I mean, just quickly two minutes to be politically correct since we promote a little Zarka's promotions, uh, innovation. We'll also let Sujoy speak about Apple's innovation quickly in two minutes. We'll take some questions after that. Oh, so lots of them, uh, but I'll try to be quick. Um, so today uh, we just announced uh, a strategic investment into uh, uh, into Indus OS, uh, India's uh, indigenous uh, app store, uh, which is exclusive on the Samsung Galaxy and other uh, other devices. Uh, Samsung. Uh, in this domain, uh, Sujay, just uh, to investor. in this domain, in I this am domain getting conversation marketing. Anything? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, what that allows us to do is to do two things: uh, vernacular um, and uh, go into go into video. Right? Both of which are the uh, I think which makes or democratizes uh, democratizes conversations uh, to a large extent, and uh, and doing that through easy ways on apps. Uh, based on data uh, backed by a DMP, for example, that understands uh, both user profiles uh, and engagements, and therefore is able to uh, with and, and is able to help AdTech live up to its true potential, right? Uh, so it's relevant point. To we have a question on this. Ankit uh, has asked that how important is regional language to all of this? Nina, you did uh, this with ADM long back, even with Zerka. So how important is the regional languages in, in a country like India and otherwise also? It's, uh, it's if I can take that, uh, it's, it's the language we converse in. Um, mm. India does not, or the people in this, this room are not uh, extremely representative of, uh, of larger uh, India, if I, can, if I can say that. Um, and uh, it, it's it's the natural course of things uh, where innovation starts and where they go. So, so okay. Bharat, as we say, is estimated mm-hmm. to be a three million three billion dollar market in the next two mm-hmm. years. Uh, language is very critical because of the levels. One is level of comfort of language. Two is education, lack of mm-hmm. uh, you know ability to read. So entertainment, viewing, and audio, and access to cheaper devices and cheap data. And I think Geo has done that, and and uh, I, a country that I'll refer to only as a country has enabled the cheap uh, uh, phone today. So it is significantly important. Its value can only be determined when we when we move to start talking to them specifically. You know, are they a great consumer segment from a marketer's point? That needs to be determined still and for which buckets. It's a massive massive piece, like. There's a significant yes, true. Yeah, and there are there's significant investment happening in that part today. Sure. So another massive point actually made by Rahul uh, on questions. Um asking, and I'll ask straight to Ramakant. Um, do you feel the government um, you know, uh, I will actually put two parts, is doing enough on the data protection laws 
and um, do you think that they need to be you know making it more stringent and to make it more stringent they actually need a lot more clarity themselves is what i would presume so what is your point of view on that so uh, you know it's a very tricky uh, matter as you know and uh, if there are some references to be drawn we have the gdpr and those kind of things in europe and the other markets uh, i think for scaling up any business it is important that uh, if there are any loopholes or leakages or risks they have to be curbed i, I don't deny that at all you know if the data is getting misused if the data has been uh, you know uh, data has been procured without customer's consent uh, i think these things need to be addressed over a period of time right uh, the thing is that uh, the the entire process has to be gradual it should not be like one uh, you know uh, one fine day everything changes because so many systems have evolved like that they have been created in a certain fashion uh, so it it needs to be uh, you know there should be enough time given uh, customers have to be educated because you know when it comes to uh, marketers procuring consent uh, the customers also have to understand uh, their rights and their uh, you know the risks so this whole thing needs to be done in a gradual process mm -hmm. okay so so i think that another interesting question on this topic and uh, i actually love this question by rupin he says that is there something like too much data <laughs> where we have so much data about consumers that we lose sight of the consumers themselves and optimize for numbers and not humans how do we avoid that trap so i i find it it's a very interesting um, philosophical question but real to the core because sometimes when we get so close to you know reading something we often lose the sight of what we are reading or trying to read so i i, I don't want to specifically tell anybody but all of you all can give a quick you know point to this that are we are we becoming too friendly to pd's machine human connection <laughs> or are we going to the other side of saying that yes panel is important and then have her another leg on the other front by saying i will promote um, you know automation and conversation marketing so anybody can take this and uh, you know we can soon you know now, kind of wind it yeah now that you have made me the antagonist i just want to say that uh, there's nothing like uh, too much data rather there's a challenge of uh, very little useful data mm -hmm. so so you need to sift through uh, tons and tons of that data to find the right pieces to act on uh and, and but they say data is the new drug right and they say there is a overdose of drugs so why not there is something called too much of data so i'm saying saying that it already is in overdose stage you need to find the right to fix it so <laughs> okay. it's not about how much data you are capturing on users it's what you are doing with it and whether you have the right set of classic example as you rightly said was uh, by september with ios 14 coming in the device id mm. Away in, uh, in Apple, mm -hmm. uh, Google is ending the um, uh, cookie. It will be cookie-less era after mm -hmm. within eighteen months. So how now you already are doing away with the only measuring measurement ma uh, or or tra uh, trackable metric you had. Now how do you go about that? So you need to start looking beyond that. You need to start looking at behavioral and other data to derive on those pieces. So it's not a question of too much data. It's again a challenge of useful data. no pd is taking the fifth i know nina is a direct person nina <laughs> what is it is it too much data it is fomo it okay. is um right. it is just a uh, fear of thinking that if i don't talk about data i'm going to lose out second is i think it's rather simple uh, we are just in the place of complicating it because complicating things gives us commercial benefit time yes so complicated the more uh intellectual it sounds and it gives mm -hmm. us commercial benefit third is i think we are not having honest conversation so there is too much of data um mm -hmm. it is just, there is too much amount of data i think more than that it is not about too much there is a lack of clarity on what data means itself mm -hmm. and why am i seeking this data you know um i think that is the need of the hour honest conversation um mm -hmm. is what's the agenda and why do i need the data and what's the data for just having data there's a time i don't know arnav if you remember there's a time 
समन वुड से अच्छा याहू का ना सेवेंटी मिलियन यूनिक है एमएसएन का फिफ्टी मिलियन यूनिक है वी गिव बिजनेस टू याहू एंड देन यू आस्ट एम दैट विल यू ब्लडी रीच ऑल द सेवेंटी मिलियन यूनिक Why is the number of uniques important? Isn't what you are doing? Then with... they will buy one million. <laughs> yeah, they they will not even buy that one million, right? At the end yeah. of the day, I think it's the need to know basis. It is that you know we want to have information, but we are there is FOMO, we are scared, mm. but we also have immense lack of clarity on how to use. And the people like us also are responsible. We'll go yeah. and get this complicated layer of conversation, and we'll give them the fear of God. नहीं क्या तो मर जाओगे यू नो वे लाइक द पंडित द ब्राह्मण्स ऑफ द ओल्ड टाइम अम सो आई थिंक दैट इज द डेटा कनंड्रम टुडे ट्रू सो फ्रॉम ब्राह्मण टू ग्रास रूट्स द लास्ट क्वेश्चन वी वुड टेक इट सेज दैट ऑफन द लिंकेजेस बिटवीन एनालिटिक्स एंड एग्जीक्यूशन दिस क्वेश्चन बाय सुचिता इज स्टिल वेरी पुअर सो अम नम्रता यू आर नाउ डीलिंग इन दिस कैटेगरी डू यू सी अ सिमिलर इंप्लीमेंटेशन फ्रॉम योर सोफिस्टिकेटेड कार्स दैट यू वंस सोल्ड to your current uh, shift do you see the same amount of data uh, data transferring to the grassroots and quickly we have to answer this okay and then we wrap okay, so i'll give you a contrast i'll give you the b2b space and the b2c space so uh, in the b2b world which is the chemicals part of the business that i work on um there are no conversations happening there is very little data mm-hmm. and it's pretty much like a um, a customer coming to our website walking into an empty store uh, okay. there is nobody to attend to them so the bots that we are talking about you know the conversations that we are talking about the personalization that we are talking about all of that at least in the chemical space in the b2b sector is absent it's beginning to maybe start happening but by and large it's absent now let me move to the fertilizer side of the business and on that side on the you know the conversations with the uh, with the farmers that we are having um i think again there is scarce data we are we are beginning to make sense of it i gave you the example from mahindra's we're trying to do similar stuff over here we've started collating data but i think meaningful data even you know trying to have those conversations creating meaningful data is going to be a journey so we know we're close to you know um, i guess the slightly more evolved world of b2c luxury sure. automotive retail cool. etc thank yeah. you so I'll quickly just wrap guys thank you so much i think um i feel a lot more confident about not making money after this um <laughs> session and i think we still have future because we are still at the top of the iceberg as ramakan put it um so thank you for boosting my um you know um what do i say confidence in it having said that quickly quick points that came out um i think um this man and machine existence this cohesive existence is only to get stronger and deeper and richer i think it's going to be there for sure um this is the future this is the new funnel um this this will it will just going to break the the entire customer purchase funnel that we are all aware of um it's also going to um, you know continue to get richer with time because we just know a little bit about um you know this as yet uh, as nina said nobody asked the right questions um uh our some of our uh, you know viewers did and uh, we hope that together as an industry we would continue to make the right questions ask the right questions and then find out the answers to those questions ourselves so and we would do that without being the brahmins we'll involve everybody you know together so on that note thank you so much ladies and gentlemen and uh, really appreciate your time thank you thank you thank for and thank you priyanka thank you Thank you everyone thanks. thank you so much Thanks. bye it was a very insightful session thanks a lot thank you thanks bye